Okay, what I'm going to do now is I am going to make the rear part of this, but it's actually, this is broken into thirds. Here's the nose. There is a rear part, and between the rear part and the nose, there is, are, are pieces that angle inward. So before I can do those, I want to build the back piece so that when I have it, I'll be able to get the proper angle to connect them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this aside. I don't need this right now. And what I'm going to be creating is this sort of square piece right there. You can see this angled piece and that angled piece. Those will come later. I'm going to build just this sort of square part right here, not with the turret. I'm not going to worry about the turret right now. I just need this basic shape. Now here's the problem. A lot of the views, um, top, side, back, rear, it's very difficult to get a, a good look at that because you've got these engines on the side which kind of protect it or cover it. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing here is just best guess. Um, I, I'm not going for an exact duplicate. I'm not trying to build this exact thing. There will be some minor differences. And because of that, I'm not going to be too worried that I can't see the sides. I'm just going to, in my mind, I'm going to try and make it look good. So the first thing I want to do is I want to try to figure out on here what it is I actually need to cut out. And I've kind of figured it out already. This piece right here and this piece angle down. So I'm not going to worry about those right now. So what I need is I need this width and then this length. I'll just cut a rectangle to that size for now. That will be the very top with the turret removed and then I'll start tackling the sides that angle and then the purely vertical sides. So for this all I need to do is really measure it and it is interestingly enough <laughs> it's one and a half inches exact. So it tells you that there is some with this particular model there are numbers that were done uh, really well to and, and interestingly this is two inches. So uh, even though I had to do these in centimeters it's very interesting that a lot of these measurements are working out perfectly. So there's one in one and a half by two. So I will take a piece of chipboard and cut a one and a half by two inch piece. First thing I'm going to do is cut this square so I have something small to work on. And uh, sometimes it's just easier to take your chipboard and cut it into smaller pieces just to make it easier for you to, to do measurements and stuff. So I said it was going to be one and a half by two. So I will go ahead and mark one and a half and flip this over. Do one and a half. Cut that piece out and then cut it to a length or width, I can't remember, of <laughs> two inches. Probably length, since it's running the length of the ship. So now I take this and make a two inch mark. And a two inch mark. And this will be the top of the bare bones rear section, completely the back end. All right, so if I take this and I hold it up, to my image. Can you see that? It covers it. Now that little gray strip on the left and the right, those are angled pieces. So I can't get the exact length of them because I'm looking at it from the top down. So for that, I'm probably going to have to do some guesswork because I can't look at the side and I really can't see what, what, the, um, what that side looks like. Um, if I had the rear view, and by the way, the rear view of this doesn't give you much help either. That's why I didn't print it out. So knowing this, what I can do is I can look at the side view, and I know, for example, that this piece goes right here. All right. So this piece is approximately right there. Um, this, see these black lines? That's the turret part. Well, that's part of the engine, but that's where the turret uh, begins because I can see a little bit of a line right there behind the cockpit, and I know this sort of sits on it. So this is the rear section right here. Here's this panel that angles. So what I need to do is I need to look at where this box is. Well, I know that the box is going to go down, 
and then I can see this angle right there. This angle is coming up. So what I can do is I know I need to cut a piece to a certain length here. I need to continue this line. I need to draw this line so that it goes up. All right, so I've drawn a really heavy line here so I can see. I put this on there like, like right there. Actually, you know what? I need to continue this line up. So let me do that. You're going to end up drawing a lot on your your images. So don't think like I mentioned earlier, you're going to print a lot of these out. So just print what you need and don't worry about don't worry about it. So this goes right here. All right. Now what I need to do is drop a line down where it crosses this line and make that I need to draw that all right so if I continue this line here it's a lot of line drawing and this is just one of those things you start doing when you if you're gonna duplicate something that you've got schematics for all right don't know if you're gonna be able to see that very well but I have an unusual shaped side piece right here all right, and what that does is going to allow me to get to the bottom of this rectangle, which the sides, remember, it's going to be flat, angled side, and then a vertical drop. This piece right there is part of that vertical drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I am going to cut on my blue line to get that basic shape out, and then I'm going to have to fine tune this line to get it where I want it. All right. So this is not the shape I'm going to cut out. I'm going to I'm going to um, cut off this little gray area right here, which is not needed. So I need to cut that and this. All right. That is the piece that will go like so, but not quite. Remember, there's an angled piece that I have to take into consideration. I don't know what that angled piece is. I can take a guess by looking at the pictures and estimate that it's probably, well, on the, on the top view, it comes out to a quarter of an inch. And that's looking down at it. If you extended it up so it's parallel to the ground, it's going to be a little more than a quarter of an inch. Let's go with, I don't know, let's go with three-eighths. Let's just see what it looks like. So if I go with three-eighths, what I'm going to do here is I am going to cut a strip. This might actually work. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah, I can trim this piece down and not waste it. So I will trim this at 3 8 So I'm going to make a mark here. Flip this over. Make a mark right here. I'm just going to cut this to 3 8 inch wide and see how this looks. Now, a lot of a lot of what I'm doing here is trial and error stuff. I've mentioned this before. Sometimes you just have to dive in, make it, and see if it looks if it looks good. If it doesn't look good, then you know you did something wrong. So I'm going to write on here 3 8 just so I can remember that I cut it to 3 8 So the first thing I'll need to do is, do I have two? I don't have, I need to cut another one because this is, this is 2 inches, so I really needed a 4 inch long piece. But this piece is going to go at an angle, like so. And then I'm going to cut off whatever distance I need there and continue this piece on down. So let's go ahead, let me cut another 3 8 inch while I'm here and uh, we'll do that. The other good thing about doing small pieces, if I make a mistake, if, if it turns out not to look good, I haven't made a big object. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is real simple to, to recreate something small. It doesn't take as long. You haven't wasted a lot of material. And, um, you know, it just goes quicker. So do not let these kind of things bother you. If you do, you're not going to want to be crafting uh, recreations of existing objects. You're probably going to want to do your own um, do your own creations. So, all right, so I need to cut two two-inch long pieces here. So I'm going to go two and mark it at four. And spin this around, cut it at two and four. 
And normally I would use scissors and just eyeball this, but I am gonna I am gonna try and make these somewhat accurate. So I want them to be the exact same size on the left and right. So let's. Oh, man, you know what? I am gonna cut with scissors. Sometimes it's very hard to hold a thin piece down and cut it. So I'm gonna try my best to just eyeball it and then square these up. Make sure they're the exact same size. They are not but now they are. All right, so I have two two inch pieces. And what I wanna do, if you remember in the other video, I just tacked these together with a little bit of hot glue so I could move them, all right? That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of hot glue on the edge and then put it together like that and then bend it down just a hair. Oops. I may have needed to put more glue, but there we go. Just enough to hold it in place let me do this side. Let me put a little bit more glue this time. And press it up against there. And then bend it down. You can see I've given them just a slight angle. There we go. Now, I don't know what this angle should be, so these are wiggly. See how I can still wiggle them? The glue is just holding it just to, so I can work with it. Now, remember, this is going to be basically attached to here. By the way, this is going to be flush with the top of this, so I know kind of you know what it's going to look like. There's going to be a turd involved and things like that, but these two pieces are going to be connected by an angled piece. So what I need to do is I need to cut this and use it as a template in such a way that when I add it onto here and I put these flush, that this point is the right distance down. And I probably will need to print another one of these just so I can take the measurement. Uh, actually, I still have it here. So I know, for example, by putting this here back together, I know that that point is from this from this flat line right there at the cockpit. It is two inches. It's two inches this way. I mean, I love it when things work out like that. So all I have to do is make certain that when I glue this onto this edge and it's vertical down, that the distance from this point right there to the bottom point is two inches. Um, how do I do that? Well, it's a little tricky. You could use your mat, which is what I'm going to do. I luckily have a two inch mark here, so I can place it on here like so, and I, now I know where to cut it. It's going to cut right there, and thankfully that is a measurable distance, I'll bet. It's a three eighths inch, so I can come over here and I'm going to cut three, I'm going to make a mark for three eighths. I'm going to cut it and I will have my template for that final piece. I'm just going to cut this with a blade. All right. So, this glued onto the side here. I can make it too by, by bending these to the desired angle. This is so good. All right. So, remember, I'm not going to use this piece of thin paper as my template. Instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, temporarily glue it down to a piece of chipboard that I can use as a, um, I, I can cut this out and use it as a thicker template so I can cut two identical pieces. And again, the reason I'm doing this is since I'm going to use this piece of chipboard as a template, I do not have to worry about my left and right sides not being the same size. If I use this as a template, hopefully, hopefully, they should both be the same size. We will see. All right. It's a little tricky getting these inside curves or inside angles. All right, there we go. All right, this is going to be my template. I, 
will cut two of these. And if you'll remember, what I said was use a piece of um, painter's tape to just hold it down so it doesn't move on you, it doesn't shift. And make sure no tape is visible when you actually tape it down. And I'm going to just tack it in place right here, right there. And then I'm going to go slow. I'm going to cut two of these. Sometimes it's easier to cut the piece away just so you can get a little better. Yeah, get a little better control of the piece. All right, remember which one is your template. The one on top is my template. I'm not going to. All right, so I should have written it on there. Template, T for template. I'm going to pull this off. I'll label one side R and the other side left. This will be R, so I'm going to do left. Remember, you can cut them in the same. You don't have to flip this over. You can just cut another one and then use the back side as left. All right, so put it in place. And follow the edge. Try not to cut your template. Use the edge of the template to guide your blade. And you'll have one final chance to make sure everything's matching because when you get done, you'll put the right and the left side together and make sure that they, they fit well or that they match. All right. So take them, put them together. I did pretty good. I, I don't see any real major glaring errors here. All right, so what we have to do now is, first off, I'm going to reinforce the inside here. Remember, I just tacked these with a little drop of glue. I'm going to go ahead and hit those with a little bit more. And then I'll, they'll still be able to bend. Don't worry about that. All right, so now, if this is the back, I need it glued on like so. And remember, this side needs to be 90 degrees with the top. So to do that, I'm going to use a 3-2-1 block. And I will apply glue along this edge. All right. I'm going to push it against there. And then I'm going to bend it. I'm looking at it top down here and I am trying to eyeball. I don't have to worry about it being right there. Well, okay. It's kind of tricky. You know what you can do? Do it the reverse way. I should have done that to begin with. You won't be able to see what I'm seeing because of the orientation of the camera. But I am putting the tip, the top here on this line, and I'm putting the tip of the side two inches down and now I have now I have it it's a little I'm gonna separate it again because I did not get it quite the angle I wanted so I'm gonna just do it one more time should have done this to begin with use it on the two inch mark two inch and then this goes like so, make sure it's flush, it is, make sure it's at the two inch, there we go, okay, so I can already tell you that this angle right here is too deep, um, I needed to make it less, less, so I'm just going to bend it up, let me go ahead and glue the other piece in place and then I'll know a little better. Um, 
Remember, what we're making here is basically a solid box. It doesn't have a cube shape, but it will ultimately be, be enclosed on all sides. So I have plenty of time to repair any, um, any damage to the glue. Like if I didn't glue something right, I'll, I'll be able to repair it. You can, you can kind of see what it's looking like here. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, and then this piece obviously needs to bend out. All right. So the only thing I have really needing uh, that I'm really needing to do is I want to put a piece over this to make it solid so that this distance from here to that tip is two inches. So to do that, I am going to draw a square on here that is two by two. This may be more, this may be actually more work than I need to do, but this way I know that I'm gluing it into a two inch by two inch uh, square. Actually, let's see, it's, yeah, two inches by two inches, that's right. All right, so cut this way. And then cut this way. All right, let's see if I'm gonna see if I know what I'm talking about. All right, so I should be able to glue. So okay, so I have a two-inch square. I know that from the top here to these points should be two inches, and I know that the distance from this side to this side should be two inches. So when I glue this on, it should go on the top edge here, and these points should meet down here, and that will force these two angles into place. So first thing I'm going to do is glue along this top edge and let that dry or cool really well before I do any other anything else. Don't glue. Do not put glue on the bendy pieces. Glue this. Try to center it as best you can because you're going to need an equal amount of space on each side. What I probably could have done was uh, done a two inches this way, maybe a three inches this way, just to have a little extra, but that's okay. All right, so this is flush with the top there. Now, all I have to do is glue these two points so that I, I push it so that they go against, they go sort of like that. And then I'll trim the little extra bit off I'm going to do this side first. Just going to put a little glue along the edge here. And hold this in place. And again, it's not going to be exact. I can already tell you that I've got little, you know, little bit of overhang or maybe underhang. I'm not sure what the right word is, but it's not going to be it's not going to be a, a deal killer. Um, yeah, that did pretty good. Bend this out. You can already see I broke the connection here, so I'm going to have to reinforce that with more glue. Not a big deal. Just putting a little line of glue along there. I'm going to force this onto here, flush. And then once those are cooled, I'll go back and reinforce the angled sides, which thankfully the angled sides are not going to be all that visible when everything's put on here, like turret and stuff like that. But, you know, you still want it to be close. You can see I, it came apart, so no problem there. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to go ahead and separate it completely, try and scrape some of this glue off so I can put some fresh glue on there. Like that. Anytime you put hot glue on top of hot glue, you're going to have you're going to have things that don't fit well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce this with a bead of glue. I'm going to make it go flush with this edge. Run my finger over to get it smooth. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty darn smooth there. All right. This hideous. So I'm just going to take it with my finger and try and scrape it. It did not come apart like the other side did, so I'm not going to try and reinvent that. Instead, what I'm going to do is, well, it's coming apart here, so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to have to re-glue re up here. And again, this is one of those things you're going to, when you're working with chipboard, occasionally pieces are going to break apart. You just reinforce them with a little extra glue each time. And if you want a flush look, 
you'll have to wipe it off with your finger real quick before before it cools and then force everything back in I'm pretty pretty happy with that all right there we go it's a little imperfect just a little bit but again when it's added to the entire thing here not going to be that noticeable all right this has to go on to the back here before we do that I'm gonna go ahead and seal all this up we'll go ahead and do that now all right, I'm going to time lapse this because you've seen me do this in other videos, but I just want to explain what, what you're going to be seeing. Um, in order to strengthen this, I want to totally enclose it. So that means cutting chipboard to um, seal this up completely as a solid or near solid object. So what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm just going to, for example, I'm going to place some glue around here and then down and then cut around it and that'll, that'll do that. So I'm going to go ahead and time lapse now and you can watch as I close this up. All right, now I need to connect these two pieces. I don't know what the distance is going to be between them, but I do know the length of the angled piece. There's one right here on the left, one right here on the right, or flip it. Um, that piece, I know the, uh, the length of. I can measure it because I'm looking at the top down. So once I get that, I glue them onto here, and I angle them in slightly, and then they attach to this. But how do I make sure that it's not, you know, lopsided one way or the other? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a center line. So I'm going to make a mark at the one inch here. And I apologize, I've got a kid in the background yelling at his video game friends. And I'm going to make a mark here. So this is the midpoint. That's the midpoint of this piece, okay? And probably what I should have done was continued it on, but I can I can line it up. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a middle point line on this piece. So this was two and a half inches, and it's still two and a half. So one and a quarter. Come around to this side. It's still two and a half inches. I did pretty good there. One and a quarter, and I'm just going to connect this with a line. This is the midpoint of the nose the nose of the craft. So as long as these two lines are lined up, I should be able to center it and get those, those two angled pieces identical. I am going to move this line up to, um, up to the top here. And because I have a, a nice triangle here, I can, I can do this. Well, let's see, how do I do this? Oh, that's right, because that's a one inch. I was like, how did that work out perfectly? It's because that is a one inch wide one two three block so I should be able to draw let's see did I draw a line pretty darn close it was a little off I can, I can do this oh yeah it was way off so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the height of this to make a mark 
There we go. All right, so just looking at it, I can tell that it's about right. Pretty, pretty close. So I don't know the. I know that the the. Um, I know that the angled pieces are going to be this long, going up to that point. Does that make sense? So I can kind of. I I'll have to cut that on the fly. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but I do know that that piece is going to be. I can measure it on here. That angled piece is. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Well, it's seven eighths. Okay. So I will cut a seven eighths piece of chipboard. Let me finish this piece here. Right, I'll cut this at seven eighths, which is right there. And again, you don't have to be exact on this. I'll keep repeating this only because right now what we're building is the internal skeleton of this thing. It's going to look ugly. It's made of chipboard and hot glue and when it is when it when it's all done for the for the just the chipboard, it's going to look hideous. Then we have to cover the exterior and start making it look like a real ship. So just hang with me real quick, real quick. So what I'm going to do is I know this is two inches. I believe it's two. No, it's two and an eighth. Okay. So at least I'm going to cut a two and one eighth inch. I'm going to go ahead and make it two and a quarter just to be safe. I'm going to cut two pieces that are two and a quarter. And those will be my pieces that are going to be glued at an angle. And I'm just going to use scissors here because I know I gave myself a little leeway. And I'm going to put this on here flush with this edge. And then I'm going to cut a second one. Hot glue on the scissors. Not good. All right, here we go. All right. These two pieces are roughly equivalent. So I'm going to, I'm going to glue them on here, and they're going to be going back at an angle. And I'm just going to tack these in place with just a little bit of glue. And I'm going to go ahead and glue them flush because I don't want them bending just yet. I'm going to just, I just want the sides to be flush. All right, so now I'll take this piece, put a little glue on it. I want to glue it flush with the other side. Okay. There we go. All right, there are my side pieces not bent but I can you can see they're flexible I can bend them in so I know that this length is correct from from here to there it just has to match up has to match up with when it comes in it's going to be glued like that and I'm of course I'm going to have to taper it at some point I, I didn't make plans for that yet but I can do that all right, so there we go. Let me double check my measurements to make sure because I don't want to glue this on and have, have to redo everything. So I'm going to check my measurements and we'll come back and get this fixed. All right, always check your numbers. I'm glad I went and checked my math because I caught something. These angled pieces here, I need to trim them flush with this line. See this part that angled in, if you remember right? Um, it. Uh, this is cut flush. So I can do this with scissors. I should be able to do this with scissors. There we go. And I'm eyeballing it, but this is one of those things you can't eyeball because it's going to be covered by a piece later. All right, there we go. Now, the bottom edges of these correspond to the bottom edge down here. So what you're going to end up with is something that looks kind of like that. So before I do anything, I need to, I'm going to have to reinforce this at some point, but I need to go ahead and attach these so I can get the angle correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of hot glue down one side right here. I'm just going to go right down the edge. I'm going to just do one of these. I'm gluing it on flush like that. Like that. 
let that dry a little bit. I'm going to flip it around. And I'm going to do the other side. This is a little tricky. I'm going to have to put the glue actually on this edge this time. And I'm going to attach it there like that. Got a little spill off, but that's okay. I'm going to wipe it with my finger. All right, so far so good. You can see it's lopsided, but it's movable. See that, how it wiggles? So in just a moment, I'm going to have to make sure these lines line up, and I know how I'm going to do that. All right, they do not line up. So I am going to take a piece of chipboard, just a piece of, piece of waste here, okay? And I want to... I want to put some glue on both ends. Now it's wider than this gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it in here, touch both sides, and then push the line to where it to where it lines up. And I'm eyeballing and I'm just looking at it from the top. And hopefully when this glue dries and this glue dries, this piece in here will at least hold it until I can seal it all up. So there we go. It's still wanting to push this way, so that means the glue is not cooled yet. It's still not cooled. All right. Come on. There we go. Now it's starting to cool because it's not wanting to push. There we go. And even if it does shift a little bit, later when I cover this up, it'll, it'll fix it. I'll fix it to where the line lines up. But there we go. So now I've got these two pieces glued together with angled pieces on top that angle in. Okay, You can kind of start seeing it now. And I don't have a side view picture. I'll have to go print another one, but it's starting to come together. Now you can see the basic shape of the flyer. Uh, nothing fancy here. Uh, what did I do here? I'm just going to take that off. Um, side view is looking. You can kind of see it. Put a turret up here. Put a cockpit right here. Um, got it. Got to do down here. So there you go. Uh, let's uh, let me stop here temporarily and make sure. Let me go get a side view comparison, and then we'll start sealing all this up. To finish up this video and finish up this portion. I need to seal this and this. You know where I'm going with this. I'm gonna probably go ahead and time lapse it, but I'm just going to cut a piece, glue it over here, and then trim it flush to seal it up.